Can I stay just for today? The day after my son's funeral, my six-year-old grandson, covered in bruises, visited our home late at night. Where's your mom? I asked, trying to maintain composure despite my surprise. In response, my grandson burst into tears. Mom's sleeping with a man at home. My daughter-in-law, who didn't attend a funeral for her husband who died in an accident. Moreover, what could she possibly mean by being with another man? And what about all the bruises covering my grandson's body? That woman might have done something outrageous. Deciding so, I resolved to render my despicable daughter-in-law permanently unable to recover through a certain method. If only I had opposed my son's marriage seven years ago. Perhaps no one would have suffered. Living peacefully with my husband, enjoying hobbies like gardening and taking walks together for exercise after retirement, life was tranquil. My only son, Stephen, had already married Ashley and lived with their six-year-old son Mark in the neighboring town. It was seven years ago when my son brought Ashley home. Mom, I'm thinking of marrying her. Nice to meet you. I'm Ashley. Pleasure to meet you. She, his junior colleague, was five years younger than Stephen and seemed a bit loud, but she was friendly and her responses were clear and lively. However, Ashley's unnaturally bright smile, glued to her face, made me feel uneasy. My son was reserved and shy not even close to considering love, so I thought he was far from marriage. So when he introduced her as his fiancée, I honestly was surprised and couldn't believe it. Is she really good enough for you? After Ashley left, I couldn't help but corner my son because I worried. What do you mean? I feel like you two are very different. Ashley struggled after losing her parents early. She's actually a strong woman with a strong core. I like having a girl who can take charge like her. When Stephen talked about her, he had such a gentle and genuinely happy expression. I decided to trust the partner my son had chosen for himself. And then, Ashley became pregnant shortly after marriage and gave birth to a healthy baby boy. My son was truly delighted, and I couldn't help but feel relieved thinking. Their marriage wasn't a mistake. And so, I found my role as a grandmother. I'd like to go out with Ashley alone, can I leave Mark with you? Of course. Make sure to show appreciation to your wife. She's always working hard with childcare and housework. I understand. Occasionally, Stephen and Ashley would leave their son with us and go out together like this. Their relationship seemed to be going well, and I felt happy to spend time with my adorable grandson Mark. However, a shadow began to loom over such everyday life. It was when my grandson was about five years old. Returning from a trip with friends, I decided to stop by my son's house on the way to deliver souvenirs. I was just going to drop them off and leave immediately, so I headed there without notifying anyone. Mark. Stop fooling around. If you can't listen, then get out. Ah. Oh, I'm sorry. Mom, please forgive me. Standing in front of Stephen's home entrance, I could hear Ashley's angry voice and Mark's crying screams. Wondering what was happening, I rang the doorbell. Ashley. It's me. After a while, the door slowly opened, and my daughter-in-law peeked out cautiously. Mother-in-law, what's the sudden visit? Stephen is still at work, you know. Upon seeing me, Ashley furrowed her brows and made a displeased expression. Her tone was low almost to the point of being inaudible, as if she found dealing with me bothersome. I came to deliver souvenirs from the trip, 
But then I heard loud voices, so I wondered what was happening. Oh. Mark was about to jump from the stairs, so I just scolded him, that's all. Is that so? Is Mark okay then? He's fine, so could you refrain from interfering? With a stern tone, Ashley said this and forcefully closed the door. My daughter-in-law had never shown such an attitude before, so I was very surprised. However, I soon realized that it might not have been a good idea to visit without any prior notice. Besides, Ashley was new to parenting. Having walked the same path of motherhood as my daughter-in-law, I understand her feelings well. Perhaps she's accumulating stress from childcare. And... I became worried not only about Ashley but also about my grandson, so I decided to talk to my son about it. Was Ashley upset? That very night, I called Stephen. Huh, what's going on? There didn't seem to be anything particularly different. I see, well, that's good then. My son told me like that, but I couldn't be sure how Ashley truly felt. Therefore, from then on, I made sure to always contact them before visiting their house. However, since then, whenever I visited their home, my daughter-in-law was almost always absent. Recently, Ashley hasn't been home much. Did she start any new hobbies? Thinking that she might be avoiding me, I tried to indirectly inquire about my daughter-in-law's actions. No, she's just not home a lot on her days off, so I end up taking care of Mark more often. My son didn't seem particularly concerned about his wife's absence. Seeing that he seemed to be enjoying his time with the children, I felt it wasn't my place to interfere. About a year passed, and Mark turned six. Unfortunately, I had a prior commitment on his birthday, so we planned to celebrate it on another day. Wanting to give him something he truly wanted, I called my son. What would be a good birthday present for him this year? I have an overnight job today, so I'll ask him when I get back and let you know. It seemed Stephen had been quite busy lately, traveling around the country for business trips, sometimes being away from home for several days. He has a precious wife and child, so I hope he doesn't overwork himself and stays healthy. I planned to convey this message to him the next time I saw him. However, little did I know, that phone call would be our last conversation. The next day, I received a call from my daughter-in-law informing me that Stephen had been involved in a hit-and-run accident and had passed away. I can't believe it. We just talked yesterday, and he seemed fine. I was in shock and couldn't find the words, so I inadvertently hung up the phone. However, I needed to confirm details about the funeral arrangements. So, I reached out to my daughter-in-law. Ashley, I'm sorry about earlier. I was just so shocked and didn't know what to say. Hmm. It's fine. So, what are your plans for Stephen's funeral? That's up to you. Do whatever you want. Before I could say anything further, the call abruptly ended. I was surprised by Ashley's response. However, thinking that my daughter-in-law must be even more shocked than I was, to say something like that, I decided to take the lead in organizing the funeral preparations. After that, I was busy for several days, and I only contacted Ashley to inform her of the funeral schedule. I didn't have the time to listen to her or offer any support. Then, amidst the grief, we reached the day of my son's funeral. Ashley, what could be wrong? To my surprise, my daughter-in-law didn't show up at the venue even when the time came and no matter how many times I called her, I couldn't reach her. As a result, 
The funeral proceeded without Ashley and my grandson. Even after the ceremony, I continued trying to contact Ashley, but she never responded to any of my calls. I considered going to her home, but with constant visitors, I couldn't find a suitable time. It was on the late night of the day after the funeral. Grandma, Grandpa. As I woke up to use the restroom, I noticed a voice calling us from the direction of the front door. Who could it be at this hour? I cautiously opened the door, only to find my six-year-old grandchild, Mark, standing there. And he was covered in bruises all over his body. Can I stay over just for tonight? As soon as he saw my face, Mark began trembling, his expression on the verge of tears. Where's your mom? She's sleeping with a man at home. He told me not to come back until tomorrow night. Upon closer inquiry, I learned that Mark had walked all the way from the neighboring town to get here. I embraced the tearful child tightly. Despite the recent loss of my son, the fact that my daughter-in-law had been involved with another man and neglected Mark filled me with both sadness and anger. Then there was another concern, Mark's injuries. Upon examining Mark's entire body, I discovered numerous painful scars, ranging from fresh wounds to older ones. What happened to these wounds? I can't tell you. Mark remained silent, refusing to speak no matter how many times I asked. I couldn't determine if he was protecting someone or being silenced, but I began to suspect whether my daughter-in-law had been mistreating Mark all along. I invited my grandson into the room and offered him some hot milk. Grandma. What's wrong? Are you sleepy already? No. It's something else. If dad goes to the other world, will we get lots of money? Huh. Who said something like that? A six-year-old grandson shouldn't know about such things. Certainly, someone some adult, must have said it. Mom was talking to a man. Hearing this, a suspicion arose within me. The police are still investigating the hit and run involving my son, and the perpetrator has not been caught yet. However, considering his wife's behavior and what Mark has said, I began to suspect that Ashley might be involved in some way in this incident. Unable to sit still, I woke up my husband who was sleeping on the second floor and explained the situation. Then, I asked him to put our grandson to bed, and during that time, I decided to go check the house where Ashley was presumably having a good time with another man. When I arrived at my daughter-in-law's house, I noticed an unfamiliar car parked there. Since Ashley doesn't have a driver's license, this must belong to her affair partner. Could this be? Just in case I took note of the license plate number and checked the car for any unusual signs or damages. I found a dent as if something had collided with the front of the vehicle. As I tried to take a photo of it, despite it being late at night, someone approached me and started talking. Listening to the person's story, I became convinced that the owner of this car was undoubtedly involved in Stephen's hit and run. The next morning, I took my grandson to the hospital and had my husband go to a place that would become important from now on. And in the evening, after leaving my grandson with relatives, my husband and I headed to my son's house together. The car I saw yesterday is still parked there. That means her lover must still be inside the house. I pressed the intercom button, trembling with nerves, ready to confront my daughter-in-law. However, she didn't come out right away. Ashley, I know you're in there. We need to talk about Stephen's insurance matters. Could you please come out? Of course, what I wanted to discuss wasn't about that. However, I thought that if I mentioned the money, Ashley would come out. As I had expected, after a while, 
Ashley appeared as anticipated. What do you mean by insurance money? Since we're here, could you let us in? Um, hold on. Can we talk here? She stubbornly refused to move from the front of the door, not letting us pass through to the inside. Do you have a reason why I shouldn't come in? Upon my question, she fell silent. So, with my husband's help, I forcefully entered. And then, we proceeded to search each room, looking for her affair partner. Hey! What do you think you're doing? I'll call the police. She desperately tried to block our way. Who is this man? I asked as I opened the bedroom door, finding a man lying on the bed, seemingly the target of our search. Ashley replied. It doesn't matter who he is. This is not good. Didn't you attend Stephen's funeral because of this person? That's not true. Um... He's just a friend of mine who's traveling across the United States. He just arrived here and I let him rest. He seems tired, so please don't disturb him. Her excuse was clearly far-fetched, leaving me utterly incredulous. However, Ashley wore an expression of anger, as if we were the villains. Don't lie. Mark came to our house in the middle of the night, crying because his mom was sleeping with a man and wouldn't let him in, so he begged me to let him stay. You can't trust what a child says. He's your affair partner, isn't he? You left Mark to Stephen all this time and frequently left the house because you were meeting this man, weren't you? If I'm suspected of cheating over something like that, I can't even take a break. She sought agreement from her affair partner as well and eventually, they both smirked and began to ridicule and laugh at us. Enjoy your time while you can. I signaled to my husband and discreetly started recording the audio before getting to the main point. The one who hit and ran Stephen was your affair partner here, right? Upon hearing my words, she immediately chuckled, her body trembling slightly as she laughed. Ha! Huh. What are you talking about? Yeah, you old bitch. Accusing us without any evidence. You're out of your mind. Ashley and her lover continued to smirk and sneer at me throughout the conversation. I wouldn't say this if I didn't have evidence. There's a significant dent in the front of the car that was parked in front of the house. Just because of that, you're treating me like a criminal. It was just a minor bump. That wasn't the day my husband had the accident, was it? It was way before that. The man showed no change in expression as he confronted me, and Ashley watched the situation unfold without any reaction. But there are witnesses who saw you two trying to call a repairman to get an estimate on the day Stephen passed away. Actually, when I came to the front of this house late at night, I was approached by a young man returning from the convenience store who said he lived nearby. He was a car enthusiast and said he wanted the same car as her lovers. He mentioned that he had been interested every time he saw the car parked in front of the house. Therefore, he witnessed the lover talking to a car repairer in front of the car on the day of the accident. Additionally, he mentioned that Ashley was urging for the repairs to be done quickly. I don't remember any of that. Anyway. It's ridiculous to believe what some random neighbor said. Um. The request was for repairing a dent on the bumper. Oh, but it was refused, so the car is still here, right? Actually, the neighbor remembered the name of the shop written on the repair shop's car, so I asked my husband to go to the shop and hear the circumstances for me. They told him that her lover said the reason for the dent was a cat hitting it, but that was clearly different from what a professional would see, and the shop, feeling suspicious, 
refused the request. How do you explain this? Ugh. Oh, there was a report from the police about a hit and run. I got a call about it just now. But actually, no such call had come through. I decided to corner them into confessing. The car was a minivan and the license plate number was. Oh. Isn't it the same as the one parked in front of the house? That's. That must be some mistake. He tried to come up with an excuse, but his confidence from earlier had vanished. It seemed like they were gradually being cornered. Just a little more. I'll make them confess, for sure. I decided to move on to the next tactic. I can't bear to see Mark suffer any more after losing his father, and now if his mother gets caught. I sniffled, covering my face with my hands and pretending to cry. But the emotions overwhelmed me, and I couldn't help but let out a sob. Seeing that, Ashley seemed to be affected, she, appearing lost in thought, darkened her expression slightly. Actually, I had asked him to go pick up Stephen. Hey, what are you saying? It's okay. Really. Ashley patted his shoulder, trying to calm him down. Perhaps the man sensed something, as he backed down easily. And then suddenly my husband jumped out in front of the car, and there was no way to avoid him. Right, David. Isn't that right? Yeah. That's what happened. The lover, seeming to suddenly go along with the story, appeared quite awkward. However, Ashley continued the conversation without paying attention to his discomfort. We got scared and ran away. The guilt was overwhelming, and we couldn't bear it. We ended up staying home, unable to even attend the funeral. Whether this was true or not, I couldn't tell. But there was no sense of remorse coming from Ashley. Perhaps she intended to escape punishment through tears, but it wasn't going to work. Even if that story were true, wouldn't Stephen have been saved if you had immediately called an ambulance? That's why we got scared. Mark asked if he would get a lot of money if Daddy went to heaven. Could it be that you got rid of Stephen for insurance money because he was getting in the way? When I interrupted her story to confront her, she fell silent. And still, there was something I absolutely had to investigate further with Ashley. Ashley, weren't you mistreating not only Stephen but also your own child? Mark was covered in bruises. I, I don't know anything about that. He often falls over, you know. Then how do you explain this? I thrust a piece of paper in front of her nose. Earlier in the morning, I had taken my grandson to the hospital and gotten a diagnosis written up. It stated that the bruises were likely caused by a strong force hitting them. The doctor mentioned that Mark's injuries might have been caused by a man's force. Upon hearing my words, her lover turned his face away. Judging from his demeanor, there was no doubt he was the one who had laid hands on my grandson. And earlier, when she claimed that Mark's injuries were due to his own fault, it was likely an attempt to cover up her lover's actions. I glared at her. Ashley, can't you even protect your own child? How despicable. But... But whenever he comes around, Mark starts crying all of a sudden. It's so annoying. Finally, Ashley showed her true colors. With this statement, I was convinced that her lover had harmed Mark, and Ashley had turned a blind eye to it. Mark, you've done well so far. Leave the rest to me. My grandson, who had witnessed his own mother being intimate with a man other than his father, 
must have gone through so much pain. And Stephen, my son who went to heaven leaving behind a young child. Thinking of their feelings, flames of anger surged within me. You too will suffer. What can an old bitch like you do? With her shouted words, the room fell silent, and the only sound echoing was the ticking of the clock. However, Ashley and her lover continued to laugh heartily, seemingly still at ease. However, when I took a deep breath and began my final attack, the situation took a sudden turn. You know, it seems like you're being spread around on social media. Ha! Huh. Why? Ashley, visibly flustered, took out her smartphone and began to look up something. A male friend of my son, feeling suspicious about your absence from the funeral, contacted me. I revealed what I had known to that person. He then contacted me back, saying, his wife seemed suspicious and conducted various investigations. Afterward, Ashley's male acquaintances' checkered past and debts were revealed one after another, and other friends got involved and spread the information. Hey! It's unacceptable for you to pry into people's lives like that. Ashley seemed to have found something about herself on her phone. She looked furious at the screen, then suddenly widened her eyes. Wait. Why are my photos? Later, I received a call from my son's friend saying, Ashley's face photos are spreading on the net too. Of course, he didn't intend to go that far, but someone apparently posted the photos. Moreover, among the latest things spread, there was even a photo of her looking stern near the accident scene. It seemed like the situation was spiraling out of control. It's your fault for saying too much. What are you going to do about it? Fix this. The internet is powerful, isn't it? But, you're the one who did something bad enough to get criticized, aren't you? As I cornered her, she broke into a sweat, her face dripping like a waterfall. I'm going to inform the police about everything I've learned so far. With that, surely, the investigation will turn toward you too regarding Stephen's case, and everything will be exposed. Please don't do that. She suddenly burst into tears, her mascara running down her face, making her look pitiful. And her lover also repeatedly apologized. I won't forgive you even if you do something like that. Then the two of them exchanged glances, and Ashley nodded slightly. Then we'll silence you here and now. To my surprise, both she and the lover lunged at my husband and me. However, just at that moment, the doorbell rang, and we heard, police from the other side of the door. Huh. Why? As it turns out, someone had reported the presence of a car believed to be the one that hit Stephen just before entering the house. Help us, please. Seizing the opportunity while the two were in confusion, my husband and I rushed to the front door and were protected by the police officers. Afterward, I explained the details to the investigators who came in, and my husband played the recordings he had made. The police officers then swiftly detained both of them. This is all a mistake. I didn't do anything wrong. Despite their resistance until the end, Ashley and the lover were ultimately taken away by force. The evidence gathered later led to the arrest of my son's wife's lover for the hit-and-run on my son and the abuse towards my grandson. While the exact punishment is pending trial, we hope for the severest penalty, considering our son's grievance. Although my son's wife didn't directly participate, she may be charged with some form of complicity in the planning. Furthermore, for turning a blind eye to the terrible treatment of our grandson, she has lost custody rights. Additionally, facing societal backlash on social media, 
There is no one left to support or await her. Mark is now under our care. While living with us, he has gradually regained his spirits. We intend to continue prioritizing his happiness above all else and strive to live for his well-being.